I'm Dr. Mike McFarland, and I'm meeting with veterinary trailblazers around the world to understand the human-animal bond through their lens, as well as understand how the veterinary profession contributes to the well-being of individuals, families, and even communities. Today I'm in Southeast Asia, visiting Cambodia's agrarian communities with veterinarian and former president of the World Small Animal Veterinary Association, Dr. Syria Chunakamrai. In Southeast Asia, our religion is Buddhism, but it's not about religion. It's about the whole way of life. Respect for animal life is respect for life itself. Dr. Syria brings this Buddhist philosophy to life by teaching people how to care for their animals in a way that allows strong bonds to form between them. Having earned her veterinary degree from Cassette Sart University in Bangkok and her PhD from Cornell University, Dr. Syria is a pioneer in veterinary practice in Thailand, where she opened the country's first equine surgery practice in 1996. As the first female president of the World Small Animal Veterinary Association, she has been determined to raise the standard of care in countries where companion animal practice is still emerging. Today we're joining a local event that features horses brought together by farmers from around the area. The workshop is part of Syria's ongoing training and mentorship for members of the Cambodia Pony Welfare Organization. These animals are working animals, and in a lot of villages, they're like pickup trucks. So if something happens to the pony, something happens to the family. So this is where we see very clearly that good animal welfare means good human welfare. So tell me a little bit about CPWO. CPWO is Cambodia Pony Welfare Organization. It's not about flying in to tell people what you need to do or what you're doing bad or we're going to take care of all your animals. A lot of it is actually about changing human behavior. The organization is just a small group of people. If we were always called upon, it won't create any difference to their welfare. Whereas when we allow for communities to take ownership and responsibility of the welfare of their own animals, they start to see that they could play a main part in that. And they're proud to be part of that. So it's kind of like passing it on. Instead of being always the Superman or the hero going in to fix everything, we are actually empowering many more superheroes out there that could do that role. You hardly see anyone yelling, beating the ponies with a stick, a shank, nothing. All of this has come from a big change in attitude in how they treat their animals. As veterinarians, we have that opportunity to create that compassion I do believe that it is one of our duties to make that change in the world. When we look at welfare of the animal and we're thinking we're treating only the animals, actually we're changing and treating welfare of the humans. That's the way I feel. And ideally that's what veterinary medicine should be all about, right? The veterinarians are at the heart of public health care and we demonstrate that in a variety of ways and your entire team is out here demonstrating that for this village. As I explored Southeast Asia, it was clear that this shift in attitude goes beyond livestock. I could see evidence of the human-animal bond everywhere I went. Throughout my travels, I've found that the needs of the culture often dictate the interaction between humans and animals, and essentially the bonds that form between them. So every community I visit reveals new ways to both enhance the standard of care for animals and strengthen the human-animal bond. I believe that all animals are put on this world as signs or messages from the universe. And veterinarians are entrusted with being the translators of those messages. I love that message. I'm gonna think of myself as a veterinarian from now on through that lens. <laughs>